Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Dom and today let's have a chat about becoming a better web developer. I'm going to be taking you through a couple of different things that have helped me elevate my JavaScript skills over the past five to 10 years. And the first thing on that list is reading the documentation. And what I mean by that is to head over to the MDN or the W3 schools website and simply have a browse through those pages. Let's say you're viewing a tutorial on how to do a certain thing. While you are viewing that tutorial, you may wish to click on the links that exist within the paragraphs on the page or simply just browse through the sidebar to explore the uh, APIs, properties, methods, functions, any syntax that you can find. And what you'll find that uh, doing this does for you is that it's going to answer a lot of your unanswered questions. It's going to connect the dots. You're going to be able to find patterns between the different parts of JavaScript and the code in general. Let's say, for example, uh, you notice that a callback function is being used for a particular thing. You might question, why is it a callback function? Why can't the code just simply come after that line? Well, as you browse through the documentation, you might find that many other areas of JavaScript actually use a callback function. And exploring those areas might give you more insight as to why a callback function was used in the other area. So you'll start to pick up on patterns and a lot of your questions will be answered, especially if you're a beginner to intermediate JavaScript developer. The second benefit of the documentation is that you'll start to, in general, gain some more knowledge. Naturally, if you're reading parts of the language, the different properties and methods that are available, especially on the DOM, for example, you would just simply start to learn more things, new ways of going about doing a certain thing, uh, new methods and functions you can use within your code. But also, much like noticing patterns in the language itself, you also notice patterns in the way code is structured. Because many JavaScript APIs or methods are going to follow a similar structure. For example, the fetch API, you pass in a string and also an object containing some options. You'll find that an options object is very common throughout different, even libraries or different parts of the language. So you might then choose to use that technique in your own work to increase the uh, overall readability and maintainability of your code. It's a good pattern, right? Passing an object in. So you'll learn more things about the language itself, but also ways to go about doing certain things. I also encourage you to use vanilla JavaScript where possible. And the reason why I say this is because I believe it is the best way to really advance your JavaScript skills. I see a lot of people online, beginner developers that will go straight to learning React and Vue. And that's probably because they're trying to get a job, which is fair enough. But if your main priority is to level up your JavaScript skills, vanilla JavaScript or pure JavaScript is definitely the way to go. Because it sounds cliche, but you really need to learn the fundamentals. Learn how your tools work before you use them. Now, like I said, it's not the most efficient, especially for finding work, for example, but if you want to build those skills, definitely try this out. Now, by doing this, you might also, you might also figure out uh, ways that a library might do a certain thing. You might notice that if you put these lines of code here, do this and do that, then you produce a certain feature that a library can do. 
Now, you might not get it correct in terms of how it works on the library's side, but at least you have explored that concept. And it's all about raising your technical skills. So this is more about fine-tuning those skills. That's why I said advance, right? You want to advance those skills, learn how vanilla JavaScript works. And you actually, you'll be quite surprised um, the amount of things that you can do with vanilla JavaScript these days. You know, I find it funny when people will say that they're surprised you can do this certain thing in vanilla JavaScript when really every library or framework was partially or fully written in vanilla JavaScript in the first place. So it doesn't make sense to say, oh, I didn't know vanilla JavaScript could do this thing because that's how the library was built. It's the lowest level. You can't go lower than that in the browser at least, right? So take your time and attempt to build something with vanilla JavaScript and then possibly refactor the project or start again, do it in React or Vue once you've nailed the project in vanilla JavaScript. You find it really helps hone in those technical skills, those advanced JavaScript concepts and take you away from that high level. The last thing I wanna talk about in today's video is slowing down and treating your code like art. I read this a while ago where someone said that your text editor is the canvas and your code is the paint. And what this involves is taking pride in your code, the work you're doing. So do things such as ensure the spacing is consistent throughout your code. Even things like making sure that your comments are properly formatted, using the same naming convention across all your files. Avoid using abbreviations for things that might be unclear. Let's say, for example, you've got an if statement. An if statement on line 109 might contain a space character between the opening bracket and the first word of your condition. But the next if statement doesn't have that character. So go in there, slow down a bit, take a look at the code and just make it consistent. So it's all about, you know, taking pride in making sure your code looks good and is consistent across the board. Even things like line breaks. If you got two or three line breaks between a block, get rid of those line breaks and make it a single line break and do it across all your files. Abbreviations. By avoiding those, you make things a lot clearer, easier to read because Everyone these days has a wide screen or not everyone, but it is common to get a 16 by nine screen, right? They're generally wide and you'll find that you're able to have quite a lengthy word or statement in your code. Of course, try to keep it at a minimum, but if you need an extra few characters to explain your function or your variable, you may as well go in there and do it, okay? Now, this might also include doing things like choosing a font that you like or customizing your text editor. It's really, like I said earlier, all about slowing down and just having an extra bit of pride towards the work that you are doing. But one of the more tangible benefits of this is that by slowing down, you are taking more time to understand exactly what your work is doing or what your code is doing, should I say. So you're able to see that, for example, this function does that, then that was there, then that next part is here, and nothing is rushed. So you're able to absorb more information about what you're doing and it's going to help you in the long term 
understand not only the actual project you're working on, but also understand the certain ways in which you done a certain thing. If you learnt a new technique online on how to add a class name to a JavaScript, uh, to, a, to a DOM element, that new technique you learnt is going to be more solidified in your brain if you slow down a bit and make sure you take the time to write it out, observe it, and really take it in. Next time you want to do a, you know, a similar thing, it's going to be easier to remember and easier to understand. And that is all for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. If you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. And for all my existing subscribers, I hope you appreciate the different style of content that I tried doing. I tried to slow down a little bit and speak to the camera some more as opposed to always just uh, going over code on the screen. I'm going to try and do a few more of these videos if it receives positive feedback and so on, but let me know your thoughts down below. And I'd also like to take a quick moment to shout out um, all of my 100,000 plus subscribers because we reached that huge milestone. So thank you for subscribing and coming along on this journey with me. And I hope that I can continue to uh, help you out during your web development careers. Okay, that is all. I'll see you in the next video.